Hi Life Kids, this is Miss Andrea and this week I'm coming to you guys live from the mountains and I have come across some really interesting creatures. Check these things out. <gasps> have you guys ever seen anything like this? The wondrous Rayleigh and Ashlyn? Hi guys, we love and miss you. Okay, we have to let these guys get back to their natural habitat. Say bye. Yep, yep. Bye. Hi, guys. We have missed you guys so much, and we know that the last couple months have been a little bit weird. But guess what? Things are changing, and before you know it, we're going to be together again. But until then, we get to enjoy things like worship on the lot and our soon-to-be services in the courtyard with our families. So just know that no matter what, God loves you and he's always with you. And if you guys are ever having a day where you're just having a rough day, just pray. Remember, he's there, he's with you, and so are we. Have mommy and daddy reach out to any of us. We're all here for you guys, and we cannot wait for the day that we all get to be on campus with you, worshiping and learning and being in the word and just praising our Lord and God. We love and miss you guys so much. Bye! Jesus is Savior. Jesucristo is el bautizador. Jesus is healer. Jesus is the soon and coming King. We are Foursquare, and for the first time in history, we are having a kids and youth digital summer experience. We are excited to connect with the youth and their leaders through three days of dynamic speakers, worship, discipleship breakout sessions, collective games, and challenges. So we want to invite you and your friends to be a part of a summer of life-changing encounters. Life looks different for all of us, but Jesus Christ is the same. Yesterday, today, y por los siglos. We, we are, are Foursquare. Four square. Square.
everybody, it's me, Haley, and thanks for sticking with me all month. <laughs> Today, since that's our very last day of sticky scenarios, I figured what better way to wrap things up than with a little dessert. Ah, dessert? Wherefore art thou dessert? It's right here. Oh, it's all, everything's good. So I have chosen to go with an all American favorite. Drum roll, please. Uh, th th not that kind of drum roll. Up. Uh, th that's okay. That's a okay. rice crispy treats. Whoop whoop. Whoop whoop. Rice krispies, marshmallows. Yeah! I already got started on making it because I was just that excited. Ooh, gooey marshmallow goodness. I've already measured out and melted the butter and marshmallows. Shh. Mm. And now just to add the Rice Krispies. Here we go. Ooh, it's like cereal confetti. The best kind of confetti, because you can eat it. This month we've been learning a lot about determination. Determination is deciding it's worth it to finish what you started. In today's story, we are learning about a man from Ethiopia who was determined to understand God's promises written in the Bible. And luckily, God sent someone to help him understand. Oh, but don't let me give away any spoilers. <laughs> Spoiler alert! <laughs> See you guys in a bit! The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Inspired by the book of Acts, chapter 8. Verses 26 through 40. Philip, like his friend Stephen, was a Jesus follower. Both men had been chosen to help new believers who needed food or special care. At your service. But after Stephen was killed, the Jewish religious leaders became even more bold in hunting down people who followed Jesus. They were led by a young man named Saul. Go house to house, find these Jesus people and toss them in jail. Many of the new believers left Jerusalem and scattered, but everywhere they went, they shared the story of Jesus. Jesus is God's son. He came to rescue all of us. Philip traveled to a town in Samaria where he told everyone about Jesus and even made sick people well through God's power. I can walk, look, I can dance, <laughs> praise God. Philip and the new believers in the city were filled with joy, but then an angel of the Lord appeared to Philip. Go south to the desert road that leads from Jerusalem to Gaza. Wait, what? Everything's going so well here. What good can I do in the desert? Still, Philip set out immediately. He was about to discover that he wasn't the only one with questions. Far to the south, on that very desert road, a man from Ethiopia was speeding along in his chariot, reading from a scroll. He was led like a sheep to be killed. Who's he? He who? The man was a high official in charge of everything owned by the Ethiopian queen. He believed in God and had chosen to become a Jew, even traveling for days to worship God at the temple in Jerusalem. But still, he was filled with questions as he read from scripture. This prophet, Isaiah, I don't understand what he's saying. As Philip hiked along the road, he spotted the Ethiopian official's chariot ahead. God's spirit spoke to Philip. Go to that chariot. Stay near it. On my mark, get set. Philip ran until he came alongside the chariot, where the official was still absorbed in the words of Isaiah. When he was treated badly, he was refused a fair trial. <laughs> Do you understand what you're reading? The official's eyebrows shot up, and he nearly dropped the scroll. Stop the chariot! As the chariot slowed, the official peered down at Philip. How can I understand? I need someone to explain it to me. I'm someone. Then come sit up here with me. Thank you. Show me where you're reading. Right here. He was led like a sheep to be killed. 
just as lambs are silent while their wool is being cut off. He did not open his mouth. When he was treated badly, he was refused a fair trial. Who can say anything about his children? His life was cut off from the earth. The official frowned in concentration. Tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about? Himself or someone else? He's talking about the one God has sent to rescue all of us. His name is Jesus. As the two men traveled along that hot, dusty road, Philip shared the whole story of Jesus, how Jesus gave his life for each of us and, and was raised to life again. This, this, this is amazing. This changes everything. Ahead, the men could see a few lone palm trees. As they approached, sunlight flared off a clear pool of water. Look, water, what can stop me from being baptized? <laughs> Let's do it. Stop the chariot. Philip and the official climbed down from the chariot and Philip led the man down into the water. I baptize you in the name of Jesus. Yes, yes, praise God. Dripping wet and filled with joy, the two men came up out of the water. Philip, you'd love Ethiopia. You really should. Philip? Philip? Philip had suddenly, completely disappeared. In fact, God's spirit had whisked him away. He's gone. Only God could have done that. Let's get a move on. I've got more reading to do. <laughs> the Ethiopian official went on his way, a changed man. And Philip found himself in the town of Azotus. Um, what just happened? Well, I'm sure there are more people around here who need to hear about Jesus. Both Philip and the Ethiopian official had continued to be faithful and seek God, even when they couldn't see the whole picture. And the story of Jesus continued to spread. I love Rice Krispie Squares, full of marshmallow and zero cat hair. Oops, except for that one. Mr. Fluffins! I told him not to get on the counter. I think that's it. Yep. Oh, hi. Hello again. Uh, I was just finishing up the dessert. See? <laughs> Looks good, right? Almost as good as our story we just heard. I mean, wow. God is so awesome. Let's take a look at our timeline, shall we? Yay! In the Old Testament, God spoke to certain men called prophets to tell people what was to come. Isaiah was one of those prophets. He spoke about the coming of Jesus and what this promised savior would be like. When Jesus came to earth, he fulfilled every promise made by God. So when the Ethiopian man was reading the words of Isaiah, he was reading about Jesus, but he couldn't understand what Isaiah was talking about. It's a good thing God sent Philip to help him put all the pieces together. And it's a good thing the Ethiopian man wasn't afraid to ask questions. When he didn't understand what he was reading, he didn't let that stop him from reading or asking questions. He asked Philip to help him understand. That's important for us to do too. Questions, good questions. Questions going for one. Oh, we in the back, question number two. And oh, we got a third question right here. Don't be afraid to ask questions about God. If you don't understand something, just ask someone. Sometimes the answer won't be there right away, but still ask. Don't let what you don't understand keep you from having a relationship with God. That's the one thing to remember today. Keep going even when you have questions. Well, it's been an awesome month with you guys. It's time for a little dessert celebration. Let's try it out. Hmm. Oh! That was awesome!